So a lot of times people ask, why do you have this camper, that camper? Why don't you have that camper? Like every camper that we have at Halet RV, they all fit like a little specific different purpose. For instance, there's a lot of people that either have a more limited tow capacity, they don't want slides, they don't want a camp kitchen, they just want a camper. They don't want a fancy pants glamper. That's where this one comes in. 4,400 and about 55 pounds as we see it. The Cherokee Gray Wolf 22 MKSE. It is carpetless, central air. It's got a nice uh, solar battery tender package, 12 volt fridge. But it's got, it, the idea here is you're gonna spend a lot of your time outside, but you gotta be able to sleep and feed everybody and take the showers. It, it, it fills all those functions without breaking the bank, without being too big to tow. Absolutely phenomenal fit for half ton towing. You're like, if you got a bigger class SUV, ex, ex, I always say expedition, I don't know why, just expialidocious, it, it's in my head. But it, it fills those voids very well. But with the, the, the awning space and a nice campsite window, if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, you're not gonna you know feel like you're ready to absolutely lose it here. Overall, I think this is a fantastically executed camper. It stands as a really cool contrast to the, the Jayco 20, er, 224BH J Flight, which is very similar. Flip flops the living room and the kitchen, has a camp kitchen. They're kind of like Superman and Bizarro. They're like negative mirror image twins of one another. And if you're looking for a true queen bed in a little camper like this instead of a camp queen, stay tuned. I might have a little to get out of jail free card for you. And it's, it's kind of funny. It's a small camper. It's a simple camper. I'm going to say that a hundred times, but it's got so many really good standout qualities. I really wasn't sure to begin. So I thought I'd actually start over here on the door side with all of the window coverage. Now this isn't even including the bunks, but you got this like giant viewing window off the dinette over here. Plus you have full windows in both the uh, entry door and a breeze through extra tall window across the front Murphy sofa bed, whatever you want to kind of call it there. It can be and do, uh, you know, like uh, a little bit of anything. And that's kind of the genius of this floor plan. You see that the way that that opens up and the floor plan can convert. So it gives us the space in the seating of an RV with a slide out, but without the extra weight and cost of a slide out. Plus, you notice how you've got, it looks like a normal, like complement of, um, you know, bed storage above and beside the bed. Well, if you notice, one of the crafty things they did here is that is a traditional jackknife sleeper sofa. So there is full storage below it, plus you have separate storage outside uh, in the front compartment. So this thing is like super crafty, super creative. Um, the uh, the decor in here, it is, it's definitely a darker wood tone, but everything else is really light and bright. I think, uh, not to mention, if I get you up close here to one of these little uh, door handles, you see that little gold tinge to it. It gives it, I always say, like a very stately sort of, uh, you know, high class appearance. It, to me, it doesn't look and feel cheap. But what do you guys think about that? And here's a little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. What if you don't care about the Murphy bed? I don't want a Murphy bed. Can I get it without that? It already is without that. Just leave it down. This floor plane, there's no slide or anything you have to close. There's nothing that says you have to use it as a Murphy bed. The other thing about this... Notice how the flip down sofa sticks out a little bit past the mattress right there, just about six extra inches. Coincidentally, that is just about exactly how long a true queen bed is in comparison to a camp queen that you're looking at here. So you have the option of leaving it as it is. You have the option of leaving it down all the time. You could get a true queen bed that you leave down all the time. I mean, there's different ways you can use this. It is a super flexible floor plan. It, it, it does a lot more than you think just at a surface glance. Just because something is a Murphy bed doesn't mean it always has to be, and this is a very good example of that. Now, I don't want to try to do any sort of little movie magic on you. This is not like a Rockwood-style one-piece Murphy bed. This is a bendy bed. So if uh, you're going to change mattresses or something, unless you want it to be that full-time queen that we talked about, you're going to need to find some kind of folding mattress. Now. Thanks to the magic of the internet and the fact that camping has become the new American pastime, I swear. Uh, there is, there's more suppliers for this kind of stuff than ever before. But one other thing I thought about, this RV has one hidden feature you're never going to find in any brochure. It's got a cat cave! <laughs> in a way, I mean, 
mean, you have a legitimate extra little kind of lounge place up here. You can grab these pillows. On a rainy day, the TV would be straight across from me. I could totally see myself just kind of hanging out up here. Or, or, ooh, are you babysitting one of the grandbabies or something like that? This, this could actually be a really neat little daytime napping spot. Although you've got the bunks. So why would you do that? I don't know. It's just a thing that I thought about. I guess I didn't think it all the way through. I don't know. I don't know. Now I was asking you about the decor there. If this jelly ain't your jam, man, take a look at that 224 BHJ flight. I'll leave a link for you in the video description. Um, they make, Jayco makes a very similar layout. They offer two different interior decors though. One is brown on brown, then one is that farmhouse look. So if you're looking for something lighter and brighter, or if you're just looking for more neutral, well, you've, you've got the option for that too. Now you're noticing there's all kinds of good detail going on in this uh, kitchen. And that is one of those larger 12 volt DC compressor fridges. Not to mention, did you, did you catch over here that magnet held back combo backsplash, side splash, cutting board, serving tray, whatever you're looking for. And these all come with the little <clears throat> Cherokee hooch pump. We're going to call it a hand sanitizer pump, but I think we all know what's going to happen with that right there. At least, I don't know, in some families, probably not. I think a lot of people just hook it up to hand soap and use it in a little more utilitarian fashion. This has the Cherokee Total Control System. Um, watch this. As you walk up to it, it's motion activated. It's going to make me a liar. Come on, there we go. The idea being, when you walk back in the camper, if it's late at night, the panel backlights, so you can be like, oh yeah, turn on all my living room lights, or my outside lights, or my awning lights, or something like that right there. And anything you can do off that panel, you can do right off your phone if you'd like to. Uh, you've got a, a a simple but expandable, and that's going to be a, a recurring theme in this, especially as we look at the entertainment outside. Uh, Bluetooth AM FM stereo, but it's got HDMI plugs. There's uh, uh, the TV hookups right over there. Again, straight across from the sofa, easy viewing if you add it. And down here, as you're seeing, you've got the uh, uh, fold-down sleeper dinette with the storage below it. And note, Katrina and the waves, they were walking on sunshine, but in this Cherokee, you're sitting on plywood. <laughs> <laughs> little detail factor here you've got two separate curtains now they do go all the way to the ceiling but if you want to you could uh you know pull this curtain across pull that curtain across and then just like tuck that curtain onto the bunk to leave this open or you could pull that curtain over to block off the lower bunk and leave that top pocket open a little bit of whatever works for you Ooh, ooh, ooh! hold on i'm not trying to do a monkey impression or anything USB plugs around the corner. Very easy to miss, and a lot of times I forget to take a look at those. Now, you've got your own little night light there. You've got a night light up top. Uh, that, uh, you know, curtain banner there was just kind of blocking it a little bit. One other thing I don't want to forget. There's a little more uh, in terms of outlets in the kitchen than you realize. Like, you see the ones right there next to the window, but there's also a set of outlets under that overhead cabinet right there by that kitchen breeze window. Now, we've seen lots of good kitchen and living room features, and in this class and category... Campers very often have, frankly, pretty much afterthought bathrooms. This has the same sealed edge countertop stuff in here, that same big giant sink, and a very large medicine cabinet, and it's angled so that it faces inward toward the bathroom, so you don't have to, like, I don't know, crane your neck around. Now, up top here, you've got a full-size, like, Rockwood-style Max Air-size vent fan up here to get some really, really sweet airflow, which... In a bathroom, I think is something a lot of people would really appreciate. Now, I'm, for whatever reason, I got myself cornered in the shower here like a guy who painted himself into the corner. But I suppose it gives you a very good bird's eye view of the leg room you have around the toilet. And just for a nerd's eye view, oh, I like that. Bird's eye view, nerd's eye view. Guess who just created another nerdism? <laughs> anyway, the other thing I always like to show you is the headroom in the shower. This is a six and a half foot tall camper to the ceiling. I'm a 6'2", 6'3", nerd. That means that my head is squarely in the skylight, and you are probably Manford Man blinded by the light coming off my forehead right now, aren't you? The good news, you can see we got full shower surround paneling, though. So it's just, if, if it doesn't have the paneling, all camper, if, if a camper doesn't have the paneling, <laughs> frying my brains, <laughs> this is your brain on the sun. Anyway, as opposed to the brain on drugs. Do you guys remember those commercials? Everybody remember those commercials, right? Am I just getting old? Regardless. If it doesn't have surround paneling, all you got to do is wipe down the walls. But now you just don't have to do that. It's even easier. And that has a good look to it. And what's nice, it will stay good looking 
there's not a whole lot of decals used in Cherokee. Wildwood does something similar. J-Flight SLX pretty similar as well. It is mostly just painted aluminum bands. There's not a whole lot of graphical stuff to get peely and flaky. And I tell you what, uh, I, I have seen uh, a couple clients with uh, a couple Cherokees, like six, seven, eight years old, where like say that sidewall graphic there where it says Gray Wolf, for whatever reason, got a little weathered. They just power washed it off, still had nice looking painted aluminum under it and said, hey, you know what? I just kind of like the clean look to it. Um, the uh, door side window over here, again, well, all of the door side windows, because between the door, the bedroom, the dinette, and the two bunks, what do you got? Five windows? <laughs> on this little trailer? You've got, on an average, about one window per every four foot of box length. That's not too bad under that power awning right there. And again, this one, where it's a little bit different, is it does not have a camp kitchen. Now, you've got the outdoor uh, TV hookups there. And certainly, you know, you could throw like a, a cooler or something back here. And up near the front of the trailer, you're going to see that it does have an outside grill connect. So if you want a place to keep some drinks outside, if you, you want to do some outdoor entertainment, some grilling, that's what's kind of cool about this. It's a simple camper. It does have a pretty nice capacity to be kind of churched up a little bit, though. Now you've got that. Uh, I, I, I am personally a big fan of those glass front doors. I've had a couple clients from down south, though, say, yeah, that's that's nice, Yankee boy. But uh, down here in, uh, in in Georgia, that, that door feels like it's about 600 degrees to the touch from the outside. You can't touch that thing. I recognize that. I also don't know that I intend to just go uh, high five in the door on a regular basis, but I do understand what you're saying. I could certainly see how in those hotter climates that could be an issue. I've spent a little bit of time living in Georgia in the 6,000% humidity. I know what that's like. Um, Cherokee campers, interestingly, don't do a full front pass-through because they standardize the location up there of that water heater. Now that's what allows them to have some uh, functional, usable space other places, but it does mean you don't have a full pass-through. That being said, storage under the bed, the side compartment there, it does feel like it's it's a reasonable expectation. I can make it work, you know, for a, a weekend camping. Um, the uh, double propane tanks on the front, pretty normal in here. What's a little less common, Jayco's very good about this though, um, and Wildwood X-Lite does this as well, is that integrated tongue into the chassis. Uh, direct your attention down to the A-frame on the front of the camper. You see how those beams actually integrate into the chassis itself? That is one of the reasons the RV is shorter overall in terms of total exterior height. It's a uh, little bit smaller chassis because it's a lighter camper. It doesn't need like a giant 12-inch I-beam fifth wheel frame. Um, and, and by integrating the tongue in the chassis, you've lowered it, I don't know, three, four inches more. So the whole thing, uh, just the overall ride is a little bit lower. Uh, you know, tree branches are not quite the concern. Um, up top, you may have been able just to peek. We've got this one outfitted with the uh, juice pack solar system. It is a, a 50 watt package with a charge controller, a disconnect, a battery monitor. Um, and uh, it, it's a very good battery tender. So like for what I'm doing out here, running lights and fans and doing them for quite a while. It's it's perfectly sufficient for that. Keeping the batteries topped off while the RV's in storage so when you go up to it when you're uh, ready to camp, you hit the power tongue jack button and it doesn't go No, and instead it actually does its thing. That's what the juice pack is for. What it is not for is running the air conditioner, the microwave. It doesn't do that stuff, you know. That's, that's serious money solar. This is just little trickle charge battery tender. Did you notice that outside shower and black flush? Jayco's been good about that. Uh, Cherokee, obviously, very good about that. And hey, wouldn't you know it? Cherokee and Jayco are the two top selling stick and tin brands in the world. Wildwood right behind them. And guess what? We have all three of those here at Halo RV. I guess we just know how to pick them. Got the cargo rack on the back. Weirdly, this is going to sound crazy, but the spare tire and the four corner stabilizer jacks are actually all optional on here. I know it sounds weird, and there's no way that we would ever intentionally order one without those. It's just the way that Cherokee has their build sheet set up. Now, it does also have a factory standard backup camera, which once again, you know, this is the SE series. This is the simple series that they make, special edition, if you will. And uh, it's really smartly equipped. Like, it's got everything I would personally want or need, and then some for a trip. I tend to camp simply. I'm a camper, not a glamper. I, I enjoy glamping. I just don't own a glamper. And uh, I, I don't really see anything on this where I'm like, oh, that's really, they really cut that corner. They're missing. 
It's smart, it's intelligent, it gets the job done right. But one quick note for you. The black label package that gives you that really good looking high gloss fiberglass and those tinted frameless windows and a bunch of other odds and ends, it's actually not available on the SE series. On all other Cherokee stuff, any Wolf Pup, full Gray Wolf or full Cherokee, you can get the black label package. But the SE series is built for a specific weight, class, equipment, price point, and uh, basically they're like a cookie cutter. They just punch the same thing out all day, every day, and they won't change the recipe. If that ever changes, we definitely stock it. I, I would love to see that in Black Label, but it's just not available right now. So if you're just looking to go camping, you don't need all the glamping, give us a call. We got this one in the lineup. The biggest problem we have with this one is we're pretty much always sold out. This is a popular model. They roll out pretty much as fast as they come in. And for about the last two years, Cherokee hasn't been able to build enough of them for us. So uh, if we have one on hand, we'd love to work with you. If not, we'll put one uh, you know, in the order log and get one coming in for you and know that we always have a fresh supply of them uh, on the constant rotation. Short of that, if there's anything uh, that you you like, like what are your standout qualities on this? Like, man, that's, that's really cool. And what are the things you would change given the opportunity? I'd love to know that. I'd love to have you subscribe if you haven't. And I'd love to have you. Have a great day. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Thank you very much. It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. I am getting so fat, you'll pay me to keep my clothes on.